Today we're taking a look at the 2013 Lexus LS460. Now today we're taking a look at the F-Sport version of the LS460, which is essentially Lexus's sportier, full-size, full-luxury sedan. The LS isn't all new for 2013. This is really just a very extensive mid-cycle refresh for the LS to try and update it and bring it current with some of the competition. So up front we get Lexus's new hourglass grill, which I must say I think fits the LS much better than some of the other vehicles in the Lexus lineup that have been getting this new grill. We of course get some new headlights, some new sheet metal here and there, and a completely different interior. Just like before, the LS is available in short or a long wheelbase version, although this F-Sport package is not available in the long wheelbase edition. Keep in mind, of course, when comparing this with the Mercedes and the BMW competition, that the BMW is available in short or long wheelbase, but the Mercedes S-Class is only a long wheelbase vehicle in America. In addition to that blacked out grille up front, the F-Sport model lowers the ride height. We get these low profile tires on unique 19 inch wheels. And of course we get larger rotors with six piston Brembo brakes. Now Lexus practically invented hiding everything under really neat plastic covers so you can't see anything under the engine compartment. It's that attention to detail everywhere under the engine compartment that really Lexus excels at. Now this particular engine is the base engine in the LS and it is a 4.6 liter 386 horsepower naturally aspirated V8 engine. Now that's quite different from the competition because of course the Mercedes has six different engine options and the BMW has about four if I'm counting correctly where the LS really only has two. There's this particular option, and of course there's the LS 600 HL, which is their 438 horsepower hybrid system. Now that's $119,000 and pretty much no one buys that one. So every LS owner is gonna have this engine under the hood. Although this 4.6 liter naturally aspirated V8 is decently down on power and torque, especially torque, really when you compare it to the BMW 750's 4.4 liter twin turbo V8 or that Mercedes twin turbo V8 in the S550, this engine sounds better because of course you don't have those turbos in the way of the intake or the exhaust stream in this particular engine. So this has a very, uh, very classic V8 kind of sound both inside the vehicle and out. On the inside of the F-Sport, the first thing you'll notice is that Lexus has done away with their highly polished lacquered wood trim. Instead, the F-Sport gets this sort of aluminum-esque carbon fiber thing going on here. We, of course, have an analog clock in the dash. We have a large 12.1-inch infotainment screen, which we'll go over in a little bit. We have our requisite dual-zone climate control and optional Mark Levinson sound system. We have, of course, our gear shift lever with manual mode in the F-Sport with paddle shifters on the back of the steering wheels you can see here that's part of the F Sport package. We get uh, the little joystick that Lexus seems to like for their nav system and over here we get a drive mode selector with uh, snow mode we get our traction control off. Since this is an air suspension you can raise the height so if you're going over areas that uh, you think your car might bottom out you can use that high height button that is very handy in the F Sport model because of course this is lowered over the normal LS. And then of course we get our suspension modes here normal sport sport plus uh, comfort and eco really couldn't tell too much difference between eco and comfort uh, sport firms up the suspension a little bit but honestly because this car has an air suspension uh, the firm springs are a little bit at odds with the nature of the vehicle because the air suspension is still kind of soft in terms of damping the F Sport also gets this nice black Alcantara headliner, which is sort of a faux suede treatment. It extends all the way over to the pillars, as you can see here. Now, we don't have a stitch dash in the base model or the F Sport LS. Uh, that's reserved for the LS 600. But the doors are stitched. We have nice stitched pleather up here, stitched pleather down here, soft touch materials everywhere else. We get, of course, a three position memory seat for both the driver and the front passenger. Of course, over here, we have our auto fold mirrors, heated steering wheel, which is part of the F-Sport package, automatic high beams, blind spot monitoring, and of course, the parking sensors. As you'd expect from any full-size luxury vehicle, the seats in the LS are very thickly padded. They're nicely bolstered in our particular F-Sport model as well, having some shoulder bolsters up here in the seat as well. Now, we do have the power driver's seat with, of course, an extendable power uh, thigh cushion here, so it's a nice feature that you'll find in luxury vehicles, allowing you to help keep those thighs supported on long road trips. Of course, get four-way lumbar support in the driver's seat, 
passenger seat doesn't get that particular option, and even the headrests are powered, of course, up and down in this particular vehicle. As you'd also expect, we get a power-heated tilt-telescoping steering wheel with a decent range of motion. As you'd expect from a large luxury vehicle, these back seats in the LS are large and very comfortable. Now we're in the five passenger LS. There is of course a four passenger LS available as well, which replaces this folding center armrest with a dedicated center console that houses rear seat entertainment controls and lots of wood trim, etc. In terms of comfort, these rear seats are very nicely padded and they're definitely bucket shaped, so it's easy to stay in them even if you're going on winding mountain roads. Now we of course also get adjustable headrests for the rear passenger and for the middle passenger in this vehicle as well. Now in the middle passenger seat here, uh, you can tell that there's a fairly large hump in this vehicle because of course it is a rear wheel drive car. And uh, because of that, that definite bucket shape to the rear seats, I can't sit upright in this middle seat. So I have to cock my head to one side if I want to be back here. However, I can stare at these very nice and very handy rear vanity mirrors. Like many luxury and full-size vehicles, we don't get folding rear seat backs, but we do get a cargo and ski pass-through right here in this middle seat that allows you to uh, put those longer items all the way from the trunk there in through the cabin. The LS scores a lofty 9 out of 10 points in our exclusive trunk comfort index because this trunk is very large. You can see I can really scoot quite far back in here. I also have the largest roller bag you can carry on a domestic flight with me. So it scores decent points for trunk size, but it's the finish of this trunk that is really exceptional. Everything in here has an attention to detail that you wouldn't normally associate with a trunk. We also get some nice cargo tie downs, which is a nice handy feature in a sedan. And we have a full size spare tire under this hatch, which also is getting a little bit rare these days with vehicles replacing their spare tires, even their donuts with a can of fix a flat. We of course also get the optional power trunk hatch, which is very nice. Before we dive right into infotainment, our viewers have told us that they want to see more gauge cluster startups for the car. So this is what the LS gauge cluster looks like when you start up the car. Of course, we get our usual temperature gauge, our tachometer, speedometer, and fuel gauge over there. And uh, all the status lights are little LEDs. Now, this portion of the display up here is uh, LED backlit, so it's blue right now. And unlike uh, the hybrid Lexus models, or even the Lexus GS, this one doesn't change. So it's, it's pretty much always blue that we've noticed. Now, this sort of wine glass shape here is a full color LCD that displays your trip computer and other information for the car. Unlike pretty much every other entry in the luxury segment, Lexus's infotainment system does not use a knob arrangement. So instead we get this sort of track paddy joystick mouse thing here. Uh, we have a menu button, we have zoom up uh, in and out buttons that are direct access for the map, and of course we get a map shortcut button. As you can see, the system operates like a mouse on a computer. You can see the little mouse cursor there moving around the map, and that's how you navigate with the system. Now, to make it a little bit more intuitive and a little bit easier to use on the road, you can see that the cursor snaps to these different buttons on the screen, and that corresponds to haptic feedback on this particular little mousy joystick. I'm not sure if you can see this in this video. Maybe if we zoom in, you can see that it, it actually snaps to the various little menu items there as you go across. So that's how you know haptically what you're doing. That really does, however, mean that you have to keep your eyes on this screen a great deal more, I found, than with iDrive or MMI or even Mercedes Command. We're gonna now do a brief walk around the infotainment system. Now this is essentially the same software package just updated that Lexus and Toyota have been using in their models for quite some time. So the look and feel of everything should be very similar to you. Now this is the main menu that's accessed by that direct access button I showed you earlier. So you can see we have our options for destination navigation, our info or apps button. This does of course have smartphone app integration. Uh, you can also access your XM uh, weather, XM traffic and other XM data services via that info button like fuel prices, etc. System set up for the system as well as the vehicle. We have our radio, it's AM, FM, HD and satellite. Of course get our media button, which is our uh, USB, our CD player or DVD player, uh, and our iPhone interface. Climate control over here, which is of course duplicated with those hard buttons lower in the dash, and of course our usual Bluetooth phone interface. Here's an example of what I mean about Toyota just modifying their existing software. So you can see over here that the mapping interface uh, with this system is essentially identical to the last generation LS, as well as a wide variety of Toyota and Lexus products that we've all been familiar with for a while. Well, over here on the right, we get a new section of, of screens and we have direct access to our audio, our climate, 
our fuel economy information, etc. And that's over here on the right portion of this screen. There are very few things in this particular system that use the entire screen and they're pretty much just limited to settings adjustments and of course this main menu. Now destination entry in this particular system is essentially exactly the same as the previous generation product. Uh, as you can see here, you still have a keyboard input, although again it's not touch, so you have to use that little joystick to enter all of your information there. Now if we go back to the main menu and we choose info and apps, you can see that we have access to our smartphone apps, XM fuel prices, sports, stocks, weather, etc., traffic incidents, you can see fuel consumption data over uh, the past uh, however many miles or minutes you've been driving, and of course if we go back to the main menu again, can see what we're really after, which is the media. The radio and setup are fairly self-explanatory. Now we're on the media tab. As you can see, we're playing music off of our iPod. It does work very well with a wide variety of iDevices as well as USB devices. Bluetooth audio, of course, is an optional input there as well. Now, unlike some of the other systems, you can see the graphics are a little bit old school in this particular system. We do get album art, but it is a very small window there. We do have full access to our USB or iDevices. We, of course, get playlists, artists, albums, songs, podcasts, audiobooks, etc. In addition to being able to browse your device using the on-screen menu, you also now have access to Toyota's Entune voice commands. After the beep, say a shortcut menu command. Say help at any time for additional instructions. Play music. Play music. Say a music command. Now if I pause here for a moment, you'll notice that play song and playlist are not available in the system. And that's because I have too many songs on my iDevice right now. Say a music command. Play artist Toby Keith. Play artist Toby Keith. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. As you can see, the system works fairly well, fairly snappy, and of course those voice commands themselves are a lot more polished than the sort of robotic voice you get in the Ford and Lincoln touch systems. Of course, it worked very well with my iPhone 5 and a wide variety of USB devices. Of course, you have to keep in mind that this particular system, unlike Ford and Lincoln's uh, Sync product, uh, you can't voice command songs or certain other options in this particular system if your music library is over about 3,000 songs or so. And since my music library contains nearly 7,000 songs, I don't have access to those features in this system. Before we take the F-Sport out on the road, there are a few things we should talk about. First up, all F-Sport models come with these standard 19-inch wheels wrapped in 245-45R rubber. All F-Sport models also come standard with the LS's active air suspension. The reason I mention the air suspension is because it has a huge impact on the way that the LS F-Sport feels behind the wheel. There are pretty much three different kinds of active suspension systems on the market. The first up is MagnaRide. It uses a magnetic fluid inside the strut, and by applying voltage to that fluid, you can change whether it's going to be a thick fluid or a thin fluid, uh, allowing the strut to behave differently. The second is a fairly traditional strut arrangement with an electronically controlled valve. Volvo and a number of other manufacturers use that one. And then there's the air suspension system, which is used pretty much only by large luxury players. So, you know, BMW, Mercedes, Jaguar, etc., they use air suspensions roughly similar to the one that's in this LSF Sport. The air suspension uses an airbag that's inside the strut module itself, and there's one on every corner of the vehicle. And it operates by inflating or deflating that airbag depending on what it wants to do, as well as adjusting the pressure inside that airbag. That means that the vehicle, unlike those other two kinds of dynamic suspensions, can change the ride height by over-inflating that bag or under-inflating the bag. And it can also make the suspension stiffer or, uh, you know, softer depending on how inflated that bag is as well. The downside to that is that air suspensions can feel a little bit floaty, a little bit water bed or air bed like, depending on the road surface. The active air suspension and other systems in the car are controlled through this mode selector in the center of the console. Right now we're in normal mode. We also have comfort mode, which adapts the air suspension to be slightly softer. We have eco mode, which dulls the throttle mapping just a teeny bit for improved fuel economy. We have sport mode, which changes the way that the transmission uh, shifts as well as the throttle mapping. And then we have sport plus, which attempts to firm up those air suspension struts just a bit more and give you a bit more uh, responsiveness in your throttle mapping as well as your shift points in the transmission. Even in Sport Plus mode, which is what we're in now, the suspension is never going to be as stiff as those other adaptive suspension types like MagnaRide or the regular strut with the electronically controlled valve. And that's probably okay with a, a vehicle like the LS because this does weigh 4,300 pounds. It does compete with the BMW 7 Series and the Mercedes S Class. So something rock hard really just wouldn't be appropriate for this car. 
Out on the road, the F Sport definitely feels down on power compared to the BMW 750, the Audi A8, and the Mercedes S550. And that's because all those cars use twin turbo V8 engines. And the 4.6 liter engine under the hood of this LS is of course naturally aspirated. That also means that the power delivery of the engine is quite different from the Germans. Now the twin turbo V8s that are used in all those competitors deliver all their torque very low in the RPM range. They have a very broad torque band too. And the engine in the LSF Sport is a more traditional uh, in terms of its torque delivery. So you really have to use the manual mode in this transmission like we're going to do now to get the most out of this engine. On the bright side, the LSF Sport sounds great. I mean, the V8 engine doesn't have a supercharger to add wine or turbos to interfere with the exhaust note. So in comparison to those German vehicles, the exhaust note on this LS sounds better, honestly. Uh, it sounds more pure, more um, high performance kind of V8 sound. The downside, of course, is that you just don't get as much thrust. Part of the F Sport package is the rev match downshifts that you hear on the paddle shifting eight speed automatic transmission. It's a very quick shifting automatic transmission. Definitely seems to be a bit more responsive than the same eight speed that I've seen in the uh, IS and the ISF Sport. And that's a good thing in the LS here because the chassis is very well tuned. At 4,300 pounds, this vehicle isn't appreciably heavier or lighter than the Germans. And it feels just about as solid and just about as communicative on the road. Now Lexus has included variable gear ratio steering in all models of the LSF Sport and that definitely changes the steering dynamic a bit. When you're in the Sport Plus mode, the steering is a bit more engaging, a bit more direct, but things are still pretty numb as far as road feedback in this vehicle and that's thanks to that electric power steering. It's really no different than the BMW or the Mercedes, however, as both of those vehicles use electric power steering these days and they're both pretty numb. Well, the LSF Sport may be a bit down on power compared to the S550 and the BMW 750i, it's right about on par with the BMW 740 in terms of performance. Now, even though they weigh about the same, the 740 has a 315 horsepower turbocharged inline six, but we all know that BMW tends to underrate their engines. So the zero to 60 performance and the quarter mile times on the 740 and this LSF Sport are fairly similar. Lexus has priced the LSF Sport very appropriately coming in between $82,000 and $89,000. This vehicle is about $2,000 cheaper than a comparably equipped BMW 740 and about $10,000 cheaper than a comparably equipped BMW 750. If you were to try and compare the Mercedes S-Class, it's a little bit more difficult because there isn't one that slots right in line with this. The cheapest S-Class starts at $92,000. And if you were to try and equip something like an S550 comparably to this vehicle, it's gonna be at least $20,000 more expensive. The F Sport weighs about the same as the BMW 740i, but it has a little bit more weight in the nose. It's about 52, 53% weight up front and about 47% in the rear. While the BMW 740i, thanks to its lighter inline six, tends to be a little bit lighter in the nose and a little bit closer to that perfect 50-50. Of course, a neutral weight balance is uh, kind of disturbing to some drivers and some drivers tend to prefer something that's a little bit more nose heavy because they tend to handle a little bit more predictably when you start to lose grip. So what's my final take on the 2013 Lexus LS? Well, I really quite like it, especially this F Sport version because the regular LS is just a little bit too marshmallowy soft for me and the F Sport really does firm things up a decent amount. Now this is a lot cheaper than the 7 Series or the S Class, especially the S Class, so direct comparisons are a little bit difficult. This particular model is about $20,000 cheaper than uh, a comparable Mercedes S550 uh, and it's of course about $10,000 cheaper than a BMW 750 as well, so you have to keep that in mind. Of course, there's also the Lexus value proposition in terms of maintenance and reliability because Lexus continually scores at the very top of the charts in terms of reliability, especially because of this Lexus LS model, which is one of the most reliable vehicles on the road now. So you have to take that into account, especially if you're going to keep your car for over about 10 years or 100,000 miles, definitely consider something like this over those twin turbo V8s because there's a whole lot less plumbing going on under the hood of this vehicle. And just in, in sheer terms of mechanical reliability, you can't beat fewer parts.